Okay, I've imported some stems from one of my favorite music libraries, Premium Beat. So what do I mean by stems? Well, instead of getting a song with all the instrument and vocal tracks baked into one file, each instrument or vocal track is broken out into its own WAV file. For this song, I've taken the time to add roll colors to each stem to make them easier to identify when working in the timeline. I'll give you a quick preview of each one. One of the advantages of working with stems is that you can do a lot of things with them, including, as you'll soon see, some basic rearrangements to suit the needs of your project. The next step is to place them into one timeline. Now I could compound clip them, then open the compound clip and stack each stem, but it's not as flexible as putting them into a multicam clip. Let's do this again, but this time I'll right click and choose New Multicam Clip. The Multicam Sync window appears. Under normal circumstances, I would sync using the audio waveform, but that won't work because other than the tempo, there are no other similarities between each stem. Under angle synchronization, I have it set for the start of the first clip. So the sync points will be the beginning of each stem and they should all be in perfect sync once we open them in the angle editor. I also have angle assembly set for clips, so the stems will be assembled correctly into separate angles in the angle editor and not be combined into a single angle. I'll name the multicam clip Floating Clouds, which is the name of the song I downloaded. Then press Return. In the browser, I now have an audio-only multicam clip, as indicated by the black thumbnail. I'll double-click on it to open it into the angle editor. Now the first thing I do is maximize the screen real estate to give my audio tracks more focus. That's right, I said tracks, and when you're in the angle editor, you're in fact working with tracks, even though technically they're called angles. When I'm in the angle editor, I'm no longer in the magnetic timeline. And I do have a confession to make. Whenever I work with audio, I actually prefer working with tracks rather than the magnetic timeline. This goes back to my roots working with digital audio workstations. For me, working with audio track stacks is more logical. One of the main reasons I prefer working with audio stems in the angle editor is that I can make the tracks really, really large. In fact, much larger than I can make them if they were simply connected audio tracks in the primary storyline. I can also make the waveforms as big or small as I need. I prefer larger waveforms because it makes locating and aligning the music beats much easier. I'm going to find a happy middle ground on the track size because I'll need the additional space for adding more angles. Before playing back, I need to enable the sound for each stem by clicking the speaker icon to the left of the track name. I'll play a section from here to verify that all the stems are in sync with one another. So it's a nice piece of music. I'm going to work on the percussion track first. To solo the track, I'll hold down the Option key and click on the speaker icon. I'll play the first few measures. It's a shaker and a hi-hat. At measure 5, a snare, bass drum, and cymbal make their entrance. I want this shaker intro to last another two measures. To the right of the track name, I'll click the menu button and select Add Angle. To make a selection, I'll call up the Range Selection tool by pressing R, then place the cursor to the left of the tall spike in the waveform at roughly halfway into the intro. I'll close the range just before the snare comes in. To verify that I have the selection I want, I'll press the forward slash key. Now I'll copy the selection by pressing Command C. Before I paste it, let's talk about the monitoring angle. This is the angle that has the blue monitor icon enabled. You can also identify it as the angle with a light gray bar along the top of the angle. Normally, the monitoring angle is the video angle that is being sent to the viewer, but since I'm only working with audio, this mode has a secondary function that's important to understand. For example, if I pressed Command V right now, the selection will be pasted into the monitoring angle at the current skimmer location. I'll undo that. 
In order to target the paste operation into this empty angle, I'll need to set this angle as the monitoring angle by clicking the display icon. I'll skim to the end of the selection range, then press Command V again. Now I'll zoom in just a bit so I can more easily see the beats in the waveform. I'll move the playhead at the beginning of this note, which happens to be a downbeat. I'll press P to call out the position tool, then drag it so that the tall spikes that represent the downbeat are aligned. If you want more precision, use the comma or period keys to nudge the clip. Next, I'll skim over the main percussion angle, and when I see the clip skimmer snap to the start of the pasted clip, I'll press Command B to blade the clip. I'll skim to the tail of the pasted clip and blade again. I'll select the portion of the clip I don't want to hear, then press V to disable it. Before playing back, I need to enable the audio for this angle by clicking the speaker icon. If I need to adjust to where I want the main percussion track to come in, I'll press T to call up the trim tool, select the edit point, then drag left or right to adjust the edit point earlier or later. I want the edit to happen earlier so we hear more of the snare drum hits. I also want to remove the overlap because the volume will be louder while the audio is doubled up. Perfect! Now one of the things I like to do is listen to my percussion track with the bass because, as any musician knows, the bass is part of the rhythm section and I'll know immediately if something sounds off. I'll enable the bass speaker output, then play back. I'll press Shift Z to fit all the tracks to the window before we move on. So now that I have a modified percussion track, let's have some fun with the vocal track. One of the things I love about working with stems in the angle editor is that you can move the track up or down without affecting sync. I'll place the vocals just below the guitar track. I'll enable the sound output, then play back this section. It's a choral that repeats every four measures. I'd like to move these vocals later in time to fill in this gap. I'll start by adding a new angle and setting it as a monitoring angle and enabling the speaker for playback. I'll press R to call up the selection tool, then drag across the first section of the chorus. You may want to disable snapping when doing this so that your selections are more precise. To do this while dragging, press the N key. Press Command C to copy the selection. I'll skim toward the beginning of this last chorus, then press Command V to paste. Press P to return to the position tool, then set the top vocal track as the monitoring angle. Click the menu for the new track and choose Sync Selection to Monitoring Angle. Sometimes a window will appear that lets you know that the angle is inadequate to sync. This is Final Cut's way of telling you that it cannot find enough audio in the angle to sync to. Easy fix. Just move the selection until it's more closely aligned with what you want it to sync to, then sync the selection again. In this case, it worked, because even though my initial selection was the first chorus, the last chorus was identical to it, so it was able to perform the sync. All I need to do now is trim out the tail until the third chorus ends, just before the next choral section comes in. I'll also trim out the choral sections on the main vocal track because I don't want to hear any of them. I'll play that back. Sounds great, and now the choral section comes in exactly where I want it. Listening to this, the vocals sound a bit too dry, and I want to give them a bit of reverb. I'll press Command 5 to open the effects browser, then drop the large room onto the clip. I'll close the effects browser, then double click the top of the inspector to make it full height. I'll then bump up the amount of reverb to 70 and play back.
Great, now I need to copy the reverb to the other clip by copying the clip with the reverb applied, select the target clip, and press Command Shift V to bring up the Paste Attributes window, and press Return. The final step is to enable the guitar track and play back. And while it's playing, I can make adjustments to the volume of each track in real time. <laughs> 